there's an increase in the use of AI in our everyday lives. Now, with the creation of ChatGPT, there's a lot of jobs that might be phasing out the human element. But not personal training, right? No, you, you can't replace personal trainers. Uh, maybe I should look into ChatGPT and see how it is at making workouts. Hey everyone, welcome to Science Based Fitness. My name is Adam. Thanks for clicking on today's video. We're going to take a look at ChatGPT and give my professional opinion on what I think. And I'm someone that's a personal trainer and I do have a degree in exercise science. So hopefully I can give some good advice on if I think these workouts are good. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on what you would adjust in these programs. Uh, we're going to start out pretty basic. I'm going to ask just for a basic strength training program and then get more in depth with these questions and see how specific they can actually get. So let's Let's jump right into this. So we're going to start out with just asking for a one hour strength training program and this is what we initially get. So it starts us with a warm up 7 to 10 minutes, 5 minutes of light cardio, dynamic stretching, that's perfect, that's exactly how you'd want to start any type of uh, workout plan. Alright, now we're going to go into strength training exercises. So we're hitting deadlifts, 3 to 10 uh, repetitions. Now, okay, so it actually is going to tell you uh, what muscle you're actually working. So it says work hamstrings, glutes, and lower back. That's actually really nice in case you're someone that's not really completely sure what the exercise is training that you're doing. <clears throat> All right, bench press, three sets of 10, works chest, triceps, shoulders. All right, I'm good with that. Pull-ups or lat pull-downs, three sets of 10. So they like the structure of the three sets of 10 reps, which so do I, that's definitely a good way to do it. Works the back and the biceps. Dumbbell lunges, I'm a big fan of lunges. Uh, so it looks like from this, this program, what they basically try to do is target all of your major muscles. This actually is a pretty good workout. They do have a cool down at the end as well. I think the shortcoming to this type of workout is that if you're going to train the next day, what are you going to hit? You've already pretty much targeted all of your major muscles. Uh, if you're new to training, this might be a good strategy, but it's definitely an effective workout. Honestly, I'm actually surprised it's a little bit better than I thought it would be, but let's get a little bit more specific. All right, we're going to make a one hour long workout program for chest and arms. Oh, I actually like the way that they separated this into chest, biceps, triceps, then cool down. So that's great. So on chest, we have three sets of bench press, 10 reps, perfect. Three sets of dumbbell flies, 10 reps. I'm good with that and another three sets of push-ups for 10 reps each. That's great, that's perfect, that's nine total sets. I like to tell people 20 sets per week of whatever the desired muscle you're trying to grow or train is. So yeah, nine sets. If you do this type of workout twice a week, you'll be at a total of 18 sets, if my math's right. So um, biceps, we got bicep curls. Okay, so bicep curls, hammer curls and then preacher curls, I'm good with those, yeah. Tricep dips, tricep extensions, and overhead, overhead tricep extensions, all for three sets each. That's a perfectly reasonable workout to implement for strength training. I'm actually pretty happy with this. Let's see a little bit more specific. So let's ask what it would look like for a specific training program to grow the glutes. So I just asked for a workout to grow the glutes and it based, basically listed off everything you can see on screen here. It just kind of listed a bunch of exercises and gave me sets and rep ranges. Uh, I don't know if it was as cohesive of a structure of a workout, but I just reworded it into asking for a one hour long workout. So this seems to be a little bit more uh, structured. And then it's got us into barbell hip thrusts, which I'm a big fan of. Squats, uh, good. Deadlifts, good. Bulgarian split squats, one of the best, most underrated exercises for growing the glutes. So if you're not doing those and you're trying to grow those glutes, uh, make sure you get that on those. Cable kickbacks, I'm not a big fan of. Some people like them. Uh, I think structuring them at the end of your workout is more appropriate. Glute bridges, very similar to the thrusts. Um, you know, I could take it or leave it, but yeah, that's a pretty good workout. The more specific you can be about the type of workout you want, the better workout you can get. And of course, they give us a cool down here. Okay, so after running through those exercises, do I think this is going to end personal training? Uh, not entirely but I've, I've got to admit that there is a lot of mid to low tier level trainers and you know, I'm not throwing uh, shade at anyone out there in the industry, but there's a lot of people that get into the field that aren't necessarily the best and are looking at it as just a part-time job. I think a lot of those people could probably be phased out. For someone who's a beginner or even just an intermediate individual who uh, is just new to training and doesn't really care that much about optimizing every little aspect of your training, that was pretty good. I think when it gets to be a little bit more specific for your goals, you might find some issues, but that is where I do think personal trainers won't just die off 
because you still have the ability to identify issues with form. ChatGPT obviously isn't analyzing your form, at least not yet. Um, so when it comes to form and when it comes to any type of alteration of exercise, so when I work with someone that has had previous knee injuries or back issues, I can adjust forms and adjust exercises to help uh, limit any type of pain they're experiencing. Along with the idea that you're actually helping out the client when you're handing them weights or maybe you're spotting them on a chest press so they don't you know, hit themselves with a weight. Uh, that's something that obviously uh, an app can't help with. But one of the most underrated aspects of being a personal trainer is human interaction. You're kind of like a therapist in a little bit of a way. Sometimes people are there not just to work out, but they're there to de-stress and they want to talk a little bit about what they have going on. Sometimes we mix in things like boxing that, you know, chat GPT might not be like, hey, this person's not lifting well today and they've seemed stressed out. Let's throw in some boxing to, you know, put a smile on their face and get their heart rate up. So that's something that the human element can identify and see. And people do train with me just to talk. I've had a lot of people, a lot of older women that are there just to kind of de-stress and, and have a social uh, element to their actual training. So I think that's something that that an app like this can't remove, at least not yet. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these workouts, any alterations you would do. Head over and check out my channel right up here. YouTube thinks you'd like this video the best, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good day.